This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. I can't imagine a better place than northern San Diego County to breed reptiles and amphibians. And when I look around at this beautiful landscape, it's hard to believe that just over that hill, there are thousands of animals. Let's go take a look. Sanfire Dragon Ranch was founded in 1982 and sprawls over several acres in northern San Diego County. He specializes in bearded dragons and breeding amphibians. And what a gorgeous place to have this amazing breeding center. I'm inside one of Bob Mayo from Sanfire Dragon's Ranch Bearded Dragon Cages. As you can see, he certainly gives them plenty of room. Now he's a commercial breeder and Bob was really the grandfather for really breeding bearded dragons in captivity in America. And of course, he's famous for the Sandfire line of bearded dragon. But it's just kind of cool to see enclosures like this outdoor in the elements in this beautiful northern San Diego County. Now, he keeps one male and seven females in these huge pits here, and they're completely natural. These guys can run around. They've got hiding spots, basking spots, shade. They basically have everything they need. He even grows vegetation within the actual enclosure so they can feed at any time. Of course, he saw supplements with crickets and other bugs and superworms in this environment. But I tell you what, this is an amazing way to breed bearded dragons, but I tell you what, he's got a ton of other things going on. It's going to be one cool day. The Australian white tree frog has an unusual look as an adult, affording it some interesting nicknames. What's the most common nickname used for the Australian white tree frog? A. Dumpy frog. B. Java frog. Or C. Waxy frog. Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the right answer. For this week's Reptile Report Spotlight, we'll be highlighting geckoforums.net. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. Bob typically likes to work with things that not a lot of people work with. Now, don't get me wrong, he certainly works with some of the common stuff as well, like the bearded dragons, but he always takes things to the next level. These animals happen to be pretty cool and very rarely seen in collections in America. These are actually a Rankin's dragon, and they're not really a bearded dragon because this is the adult size of them. They're a Pagona Henry Lawson eye, and it's pretty cool to see something that is so similar to a bearded dragon, but only this size. Now, these used to be relatively popular and quite around maybe 10 or 15 years ago, and now you hardly see him whatsoever and he's got a couple gravid females right now these guys are going to lay anywhere from 10 to 15 eggs and they hatch out like little teeny tiny bearded dragons and again they get about the same size but their activity is a little bit different you can see how they run around a lot more than a bearded but their care is pretty much the same these guys are cool little monkeys I'm here with my good friend Jason Quinn. He kind of joined me on this adventure. And Jason, you're uh, you're really more of a lizard guy, right? I am allowed to have lizards now, so that is what I keep. Absolutely. Wait a second. Wait, wait. You're allowed. I mean, your, your mom and dad said <laughs> no, you can't. No, no, my wife is not a not a lover oh, of snakes. Your so. wife. I t we're gonna have to talk to her. Yeah, <laughs> you <her> especially. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on board. So, uh, so what do you think of this little guy? I mean, this is about as cool as it gets as far as I'm concerned. Beautiful little horn lizard. Exactly. And these are actually the short horn lizard. These guys are indigenous or endemic to, to New Mexico, Arizona area. And let me show you one of these dolls. I mean, I tell you what. That oh, one's on fire. Look at that thing, man. I mean, not only is it so big and so fat, but the color is absolutely Yeah, the incredible. orange on the on the horns on the front is amazing. So right now you keep uh, ac ackies and, and chameleons and... Uh, Euromastics and yeah. leeches. Right, so yeah. I mean, this is definitely something that you're gonna get, right? I mean, I don't think that I wanna have ants running around <laughs> that I'm... <laughs> well, they can eat crickets, they're fine. Yeah, I, I don't mess with crickets either. Oh, God. Dubias. Check this out, guys. Now, Bob has one of the coolest amphibian breeding collections that I've ever been to. And one of the animals that I've always really dug were these albino woodhouse toads. Now, he actually acquired these about five years ago. And when he first bred them, I actually bought some little albino toadlets from them. And they were so cute. I absolutely loved them. Now, it's interesting. These guys are endemic to basically the southwest all the way up into the Utah area. They're part of the American toad family. Now, reproduce. Productively, these guys produce a lot. They'll have thousands of eggs, and typically you'll metamorphose maybe about a thousand little tadpoles 
superb clutch or so. And the way to breed these guys is to start by cooling them down and drying them out for a couple month period. Then you actually put them into some shallow water with some papaya tops so that they have a place to go on. And typically right at that time, they're gonna spawn. You're gonna have thousands of eggs, eventually a bunch of toadlets, and then these little cute little guys here. I tell you, I've traveled to collections all over the world and I've seen some amazing things. And building after building of such incredible animals is always cool, but I gotta be honest with you, I've never walked through a trail of cactus to get from one building to the next. This is not only an incredible animal place, but it's surrounded by so many neat features like this. I tell you, I've gotta move out to San Diego. This is absolutely incredible. You guys know that I love to take a look at rare animals and it doesn't get much more rare than this. Now when I was a kid, I used to trounce around the woods and find leopard frogs all over the place. Well this happens to be an albino leopard frog. Now there's only a couple that we know of in existence right now, so I certainly would categorize that as rare. Now Bob has two females, so with any luck, he's gonna get some heterozygous babies and eventually, let's hope we can see a bunch of little froglets that are albino. One of the most popular pet frogs would certainly be the White's tree frog. And there's a couple reasons for that. Typically, it's because they're so easy to care for. They're very forgiving. The one thing about amphibians is sometimes they can be a little bit tough. You have to have the perfect environment for them to really thrive well. Well, the White's tree frogs are a little more hardy than that. They're really forgiving and they do tremendously well, not to mention they're extremely cool animals. They're endemic to Australia all the way up into New Guinea with the Eastern Queensland animals typically being a little bit larger like the New Guinea and the more inland being a little bit smaller variety of these guys. Now a lot of the white speckling that comes from white tree frogs are basically from areas that are more inland in Australia. And through selective breeding, Bob has been able to start bringing some of this amazing freckling out. He's starting to finally breed for specific colors, so the future is extremely bright. Now these guys have pretty high yields when it comes to production, as many as 5,000 eggs in a clutch. But typically you're gonna get anywhere from 500 to 1,000 little baby froglets. But I tell you what, that's a cute face everyone should certainly love. Like I had mentioned, Bob is really starting to put some energy into color mutations. This happens to be a ridiculous, ridiculous frog right here. It's a purple frog, guys. I mean, it's actually purple. He's calling them plums. And I just don't even know what to say. It's often that I see animals like this and I'm just almost speechless. But again, we're not really sure if it's gonna be a recessive mutation or a line bred mutation. And I'm not even sure what it is, to be totally honest with you. What turns a greenish frog to purple? I'm not 100% sure. But what's interesting also is the fact that the eyes are typically solid black. But I tell you what, not always. The mom to this animal right here is a pretty interesting animal in the sense that, take a look at her right here. She's got the black eye, but then you turn her around and she's got a normal eye. <laughs> That's pretty cool. She's got one black eye and one normal eye and she's kind of the mom to this whole plum line. So that's pretty cool. And then take a look at this one here. Now this is a completely cool animal. This is a plum guy that obviously has the normal green as well, whether it be pied or paradox. I'm not exactly sure what you call it, but nevertheless, this is a mutation that's gonna really propel White's tree frogs to the next level for sure. But this isn't the only color mutation. Let's take a look at a few more. You know, I've been all over Australia, but I'll be honest with you, I've never seen the variety of white tree frogs that I've seen right here in California. This is pretty breathtaking. So back to lizards. I tell you what, Jason, um, these are, I work with a lot of bearded dragons, and, and I don't know, none of mine look like this. <laughs> none of mine look like that either, man. <laughs> I think the coolest thing about being in this room is seeing all the males like sitting up on, and frankly, this is the coolest line of colored bearded dragons I've ever seen. And what's really cool is, is the simplicity of this setup. Because he's in San Diego, you know, he's getting tons of UV light right from the sun. He said he actually took a reading and it's about equivalent to a, a 10 UV light bulb. So, so you don't need lights. You don't certainly don't need heat because you've got, you know, the heat of the day. It's probably 90, 92 degrees yeah, in here. Warm. It's warm, it's in, warm here. in here right now. Yeah, Bob said this was his favorite in his collection, but it, unfortunately it's in shed right now. And I think this is the one from the Power Sun. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like a famous bearded dragon. <laughs> right is there, here. Exactly. Oh, and that's the other thing is talk about famous bearded dragons. You know, if you guys watch the show Holes with Shia LaBeouf, that movie a long time ago, it was Bob's bearded dragons. And they gave him makeup, right? And they gave him makeup. They did little dots on him and uh, and they were venomous lizards. Thing. Brian, you gotta see my favorite one here though. Let's go take a look. It's unreal. I, I've never seen anything like it. 
You know, I've seen red bearded dragons before, but this is a whole different situation. This is maroon. <laughs> I know. It's amazing that that started as a gray animal at some point down the road, and just through selective breeding and line breeding, he's gotten to that point. Just, I, I don't even have anything to say about it. It's just absolutely <laughs> jaw-dropping. I know. It just makes me realize how far off we are from, uh, from, from my collection to get to this. It makes me excited to see what the future holds, even for animals like this. I mean, you know, 20 years from now, what are we going to be looking at? Oh my Green? Gosh. Yeah, green <laughs> and red. I mean, just solid red, no pattern whatsoever, fluorescent purple. Uh, Bring anyone, it on. If anyone can do it, Bob can do it. So I'm here with Bob, the owner of Sandfire, and I tell you, this place is amazing, and there's a lot of frogs and, and other animals I've never even seen. In particular, I've seen a lot of horn frogs, but these are pretty special, huh? Yeah, these are different. They're Ceratophrys joazarensis. These are captive bred animals that we did a couple of years ago okay. here, and we're trying them. I don't think they're quite ready. They are hooked up, but to no avail. Most of the Ceratophrys have a lot of eggs, right? I mean, yeah, they have quite a few eggs. Um, they also are cannibalistic, oh, <laughs> so, yes, so that kind of uh, takes care of the, any excess. And you have to feed them uh, red worms or uh, black worms. Gotcha. That gets real expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't feed them enough of those, then they start eating each other. So right. they're, they're pr they aren't as easy as one would think. So Bob, what do we have here? Okay, these are waxy monkey frogs. These particular ones were from Paraguay. You can see this is starting to turn blue on the top. That's, yeah. is that stre something that that's you... stress coloration. Oh, it's stress coloration. Sometimes you see pictures of them, they're all this brilliant blue. It's because they're really stressed. And what would cause that stress right now? Just being handled and picked oh, up. Oh, okay, you know? gotcha. You can certainly tell Bob's totally in tune with his animals. This guy really knows his stuff. Now that's pretty amazing. Literally, right in front of our eyes, we're yeah. starting to see it turned blue, so. That was chameleon-like. Wow, I mean, look at how blue that is now. I mean, look at that. That is truly amazing, all the blue that's coming out in here. If that is an indicator, of kind of just leave it alone, right? So, Bob, I know you work with some of the big stuff, like the bullfrogs. Can we take a look at those? Yeah, we have a few of those around. We can go look at those. <laughs> all right. Bob, I tell you, as a kid, I don't know how many people in America didn't have bullfrogs and do the old how far can they jump type of thing. Oh, yeah. So, so I've always had this kind of fondness for bullfrogs. Now, this isn't a normal bullfrog here. Tell me about this guy. I've been trying to get him for years. They came from Brazil up to uh, a fish market person in uh, New York, I believe, with a bunch of other fish and stuff, and they're selling these for frog legs. Right. Oh, and my they cost, gosh. The first ones I got were like, $125, $175 a piece. And they started coming out, I found I could get them for $6 a piece as, 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 frog, as food as, items. As food items, yeah. yeah. So we've been breeding them ever since, on and off. But now, the male and females, that has something to do with, with these earlobes? Yeah, as, as they get older, you can tell that the, the males, the tympanum are larger than the, than the eyes. Mm -hmm. And females are about females the same about size, maybe a little bit larger. Let's show you a female with some some interesting coloration. So uh, this is the one you're talking about, right? The white that's just right, kind of Yeah, you can out. see the white through their mailing Now where the did back. this pop up? It just spontaneously showed up. I've read a lot of these over the years. And it showed up. Yeah, so we're starting to see it in some of the babies. Some of the babies either, right? have it. There's a white one there. Okay, Brian, a really good frog guy should be able to just reach in there and grab one of those white ones. See one right so, there. Go for it, man. I think I got it. Wow, yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah. You can kind of see. See, I'm a pro, right? <laughs> you can kind of see how, oh, <laughs> such a pro that now it's jumped away. Oh, it went down. Got it. Got it? <laughs> All right. That was great. All right, so. I deserve that when I said I was a pro, but you can certainly see how on this little guy, all that white is starting to come through just like the adult. Certainly when this one starts to get a little bit of age to it, it's gonna be really white like this. I certainly think that in time through selective breeding, more and more of that white's gonna come through just through a polygenic amount and who knows, maybe an all white frog with red eyes. I tell you, these bullfrogs are super cool. As if it couldn't get any cooler, who has a little micro rainforest in their backyard? That's right, it's a little ecosystem right here with the rainforest, and you can kind of hear the frogs right there croaking. How cool is that? So what you have is a wet area over here and a dry area over here, and when the breeding season comes, they get together and they spawn right here in the wet area. I don't know about you guys, but this has been one of the coolest days I've ever had. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have.
What's the most common nickname used for the Australian White's Tree Frog? If you said A, Dumpy Frog, you're 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. What an amazing experience to see such cool animals. And we can't thank Bob enough for giving us this day to look around. You can check out all his information in the links in the description. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes every Thursday, only on Animal Bites TV.